Hi friends, today in this lecture we are going to talk about the basic anatomy and physiology of thyroid gland. So I am going to divide this entire presentation on anatomy and physiology of thyroid gland into two parts. See this lecture is going to be the first part where we are going to talk about firstly the anatomy of thyroid gland and in the second part we are going to talk about its physiology. So let's start this lecture. Let's start to learn the basic anatomy of thyroid gland. Yes. Yes. So thyroid gland is one of the largest gland in your entire endocrine system yes see thyroid gland is one of the largest gland in all of your endocrine organs and this thyroid gland is so important that it regulates each and every cell that present in our body so this thyroid gland by releasing the thyroid hormones it controls the basal metabolic rate of each and every cell yes so if you want to locate roughly where this thyroid gland is present then first of all you should say that this thyroid gland is present in the neck yes so presence of thyroid gland in the neck is the characteristic feature of your neck so if you want to look at further where the thyroid gland is present in the neck then you should know about a structure called Adam's apple. Yes. So what do you mean by Adam's apple? See Adam's apple is the structure which is formed by the angle of thyroid cartilage. So there are some other names for the Adam's apple. We call this Adam's apple also as laryngeal prominence. You can call this Adam's apple also as forward prominence of thyroid cartilage. So Adam's apple is the forward projection. It is the forward protuberance of your thyroid cartilage. So this thyroid cartilage is a part of larynx. And this thyroid cartilage is having a forward projection towards the neck to the outside so that whenever you palpate your whenever you take your hand and you palpate the uh, you palpate your neck with your hand and in the midline of the neck you see that there is some projection that is going on towards outside then that projection is called as Adam's apple yes and once you locate your Adam's apple then inferior to this Adam's apple or inferior to this laryngeal prominence or inferior to this forward projection of thyroid cartilage you see a structure called thyroid gland you see a structure called thyroid gland and this thyroid gland is spanning between C5 vertebrae as well as T1 vertebra yes it is spanning between two uh, vertebra that is C5 to T1. So this thyroid gland starts at C5, cervical, uh, the fifth vertebra of cervical and it's, it ends at the first vertebra of thoracic. So in between these vertebrae, the thyroid gland is actually sitting down. Yes. So let's see the structure of thyroid gland. So again, I'm repeating thyroid gland is located in the neck and it is located uh, inferior to the Adam's apple which is spanning between C5 vertebra to first thoracic vertebra. So now let us see the structure of thyroid gland. See thyroid gland is having a very special shape called butterfly shape. Yes. So if you draw this structure of thyroid gland. Uh, you can know this so thyroid gland is having a very special shape called butterfly shape and this thyroid gland 
is composed of two halves. We call this as left half and this is right half. This left half is called as left lobe of thyroid gland and this right half is called as right lobe of thyroid gland. In between these two lobes, there is a little stalk which is connecting these two lobes. We call this little stalk as isthmus. So, isthmus is nothing but it is a narrow passage. What it is? It is a narrow passage that is connecting this left lobe as well as right lobe. So, now let us talk about its dimension. Yes. So, what is the what is the height of these two lobes? We should know that. So, actually the height of either you consider right lobe as well as left lobe, the height of the lobe of the thyroid gland is 5 centimeters and its width is what and its width is 3 centimeters. When you see the thickness, its thickness is 2 centimeters, whereas the height of isthmus is going to be the 1.25 centimeters and its width is also the same that is 25 centimeters. So, these are the dimensions of your thyroid gland, where the thyroid gland is having a height of 5 centimeters, it is having a width of 3 centimeters and thickness of 2 centimeters and when you see the height and width of isthmus, you come across both around 1.25 centimeters. So, do you think thyroid gland is larger in males or in females? What do you think? See, thyroid gland is larger in females but not in males. And in pregnancy, this thyroid gland further increases its size during pregnancy. Yes. So, now let us talk about, so this is what the, uh, the basic structure of thyroid gland when you see with your eyes. So, now what I am going to do is, I am going to take a small piece of this thyroid tissue and I will try to analyze this tissue under electron microscope and when I see this tissue under electron microscope uh, by zooming in and in and in then what is the structure that I am going to see. So, let us see that yes. So, it looks so beautiful when you see under electron microscope the tissue of thyroid gland yes. So, this is your thyroid gland and now I am going to cut a small piece and I am going to observe under a microscope, yes. So, what is the structure that I am going to see? So, uh, this is my tissue and I observe that this thyroid tissue has a lots and lots and lots of microscopic spherical structures. What they are having? They are having microscopic spherical structures. And we call these microscopic spherical structures as what? There is a special name for that. We call these microscopic spherical structures as follicles. So, when you are studying the microanatomy of thyroid gland, then you come across a structure called follicle that is having a shape of sphere. So, primarily at the level of microanatomy, we find three features. So, the first feature is the presence of follicle and the second feature is having the cells that are surrounding this follicle. We call these cells as thyroid follicular cells. What are these cells called? These cells are called thyroid follicular cells. 
so whenever the thyroid stimulating hormone is released from your pituitary gland this thyroid stimulating hormone comes to this thyroid follicle and it acts on thyroid follicular cells where this thyroid follicular cells by the stimulation of tsh it is going to produce hormones in the interfollicular space we call these hormones as t3 and t4 yes triiodothyronine as well as tetraiodothyronine and these hormones once they enter into the interfollicular space we have the blood vessels in the interfollicular space where these blood vessels take these hormones and they kick these hormones to enter into the blood stream so the first feature when you see micro anatomic structure the first feature is presence of follicles and the second feature is surrounding these follicles we are having a cells called thyroid follicular cells yes these are the epithelial cells which are having a shape of cuboidal they are having a shape of cuboidal so if you talk if you talk about the shape of thyroid follicular cells this shape is fluctuating how see when the when these cells are not in active state it means when these cells are in active state they exist in a shape ranging from cuboidal to squamous ranging from cuboidal to squamous but when the thyroid stimulating hormone binds to the cell then when they still start secreting the hormones and when you observe the shape of these cells when they are secreting the hormones you come across a shape ranging from cuboidal to squamous ranging from cuboidal to squamous so this is what i wants to tell you yes so when you see the arrangement of these thyroid follicles do you think these thyroid follicles fills the entire space that we have taken the tissue no these thyroid follicles leaves these spaces in between them yes and we call these spaces that are present in between these follicles as interfollicular space what what are these spaces are called these spaces are called as interfollicular spaces so what is the importance of interfollicular space yes see uh, interfollicular space having a connective tissue we call this as loose connective tissue and it has a network of blood vessels network of blood vessels and also these spaces contains some cluster of cells and we call this cluster of cells that are present parallel to these follicles as para follicular cells what are these cells called these cells are called as para follicular cells so interfollicular spaces is having three things one is it is having loose connective tissue it is having network of blood vessels so as to absorb the secreted t3 t4 into interfollicular space and it also has para follicular cells that releases a very special type of hormone called calcitonin and this calcitonin is involved in the maintenance of blood calcium homeostasis so whenever your blood calcium spikes then this hormone is released by the cells where these hormones controls the spiked calcium so now now what i wants to do is i wants to separate this one follicle out and let's study its anatomy of the follicle yes so i will rub all this let's concentrate on a single follicle how does it actually looks like so this is our thyroid tissue we are having many follicles here yes and there are some in there are some para follicular cells present in between these follicles yes so now let's separate one follicle out and we draw this structure into a big structure this is our follicle as i already told you previously that this follicle is surrounded by cells yes the surface of the follicle is surrounded by special types of cells called epithelial cells and we call this epithelial cells as 
thyroid follicular cells they exist in different shapes depending upon the state of activity yes so we are having this thyroid follicular cells and in the middle of this thyroid follicle there is a space and this space in the middle of the follicle is filled of viscous fluid and we call this viscous fluid present in the middle of the follicle as colloid what it is it is called as colloid so this colloid contains a glycoprotein we call this glycoprotein as thyroglobulin what it is it is called as thyroglobulin so in the next part i will tell you what is the importance of thyroglobulin yes we we are going to have a huge discussion that how these thyroid hormones are synthesized yes so uh, this is the thyroid follicle so in the middle of the thyroid follicle we have a viscous fluid called colloid and this colloid contains thyroglobulin see we call these cells as epithelial cells see these epithelial cells are polarized what do what do i mean by polarized these epithelial cells are polarized this is the concept that we needs to talk about see when you see these epithelial cells there is tight junctions there are tight junctions in between these epithelial cells so due to this presence of these tight junctions it arises a concept called polarized yes so let's separate uh, one of these epithelial cell out and let's talk about this concept called polarized so we are having this epithelial cell and this is the interfollicular space here we are having interfollicular space and this is the colloid that is present within the lumen yes so the portion of the membrane the portion of the epithelial membrane that is facing into this colloid is so different when you compare the portion of the membrane that is present exposed to interfollicular space so this portion of the membrane is different when you compare the portion of the membrane with the membrane that is exposed to interfollicular space so we have two different types of membranes of epithelial cells so one portion of the membrane is exposed to colloid and other portion of the membrane is exposed to interfollicular space so this different membranes are actually uh, existed due to the presence of which junctions due to the presence of tight junctions so this gives rise to polarity this gives rise to polarity see uh, the other thing i wants to tell you is if you observe the proteins that present in the portion of the membrane that faces into this thyroid colloid is very different to the proteins that present in the portion of the membrane that faces into interfollicular space so we are having different proteins that are exposed to colloid and we have the different proteins that exposes to the interfollicular space due to the presence of tight junctions so you are thinking that how these tight junctions leads to this polarized yes so what these tight junctions do is these tight junctions do not allow the proteins that present the membrane that is exposed to the colloid to diffuse out into the membrane that is exposed to the interfollicular space so these tight junctions are stopping the movement of proteins from this place to that place so due to this stopping the or blocking the movement of these proteins they are actually giving rise to polarity yes we are having a 
a polarity trans epithelial polarity difference of around 20 millivolts due to the stopping of these proteins uh, to move from one area to other area. So, so what are the names of these membranes? The membrane that is exposed to the colloid, what is its name? And the membrane that is exposed to the interfollicular space, what is that name? So, the portion of the membrane that faces into the colloid, we call this portion of the membrane as, can you guess it? We call this portion of the membrane as apical membrane and the portion of the membrane that is exposed to the interfollicular space, we call this portion of the membrane as basolateral membranes. So, apical membrane is very different in the proteins when you compare the proteins that are present in basolateral membrane. So, this is all about this structure and completing this structure, there is a basement membrane that surrounds this follicle. What do we have? We are having the basement membrane that surrounds this follicle from other follicles. Yes. So, now let us briefly revise all this what we have discussed up to now and then I can uh, move on to discussing the vascular supply to the thyroid gland. Yes. So, what I have been talking up to now is, I have been telling about the thyroid gland is present in neck. It is present inferior to the Adam's apple or it is present inferior to the thyroid cartilage. And this thyroid tissue is mainly composed of microscopically spherical structures called follicles and these follicles are made of outside they are made of uh, special types of cells called thyroid follicular cells and these thyroid follicular cells exist in two shapes depends on their activity and in the middle of this thyroid follicle we are having a viscous fluid called colloid and this colloid contains a glycoprotein called thyroglobulin and due to the presence of tight junctions in between these epithelial cells that gives rise to a concept of polarity where the trans epithelial, the trans when you go from a uh, basolateral membrane to the apical membrane into that, there is an ex there is a difference of polarity of around 20 millivolts. Yes. So, the portion that faces into the colloid is called as apical membrane and the portion that faces outside to the interfollicular space, we call it as basolateral membrane. So, now let us talk about vascular supply. Thyroid gland is highly vascularized and when you see the arterial as well as when you see the venous drainage then arterial supply is carried out by two main arteries one is superior thyroid artery and other one is inferior thyroid artery So, the blood supply to the thyroid gland is mainly achieved by these two main arteries as far as the arterial blood supply is concerned. The first one is superior thyroid artery and the next one is inferior thyroid artery. See, this superior thyroid artery is a branch of external carotid artery and this inferior thyroid artery arises from thyrocervical trunk which is in turn a branch of subclavian artery yes so this superior thyroid artery is going to supply the blood to the anterior as well as superior portions of your thyroid gland whereas inferior thyroid artery supplies oxygenated blood to inferior aspect as well as the posterior aspect of your thyroid gland yes so, now let us talk about venous drainage, yes, let us do that. So, the venous drainage from the thyroid gland is carried out by three veins, yes, it is carried out by three veins. 
so the first vein is let me use blue color superior thyroid vein yes we are having superior thyroid vein and the second vein is middle thyroid vein and the third vein is inferior thyroid vein yes so this superior as well as this middle thyroid vein they form plexus yes they form some networks and these two veins they drain the deoxygenated blood from the superior as well as the middle portion of your thyroid gland into a special type of a vein called internal jugular vein yes they are draining this deoxygenated blood into uh, a vein called internal jugular vein yes so when you see this inferior thyroid vein it drains the deoxygenated blood from the inferior aspect into a vein called brachiocephalic vein so this is the vascular supply of thyroid gland either it is arterial supply or venous drainage yes so let me recap up to now what we have discussed so initially i am talking about the thyroid anatomical position where i have been telling that thyroid gland is present in your neck yes it is present inferior to the adam's apple or it is present inferior to the laryngeal prominence or you can say it is present inferior to the forward projection of your thyroid cartilage and this thyroid gland is in butterfly shape where it is having two lobes called left lobe as well as right lobe yes and these two lobes are connected by a narrow passage called isthmus and when you see this microscopic structure of thyroid gland we find there are some spherical structures and we call these spheres as what follicles yes and when you take this cross section of the follicle we have some cells that are present in a ring like manner we call these cells as follicular cells yes these are called epithelial cells or you can call it as follicular cells yes these follicular cells makes a protein called glycoprotein yes we are going to discuss that in the next part yes and this glycoprotein plays an important role in providing tyrosine residues to form an hormone called t3 or t4 yes so this is my end of my lecture if you really like this lecture uh, please share this video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel thank you